Hi interns and welcome to our day 11 lesson for a project search and um, today we're going to read chapter 6. It's a short chapter so we're actually going to start and complete it today and um, then we have an assignment today uh, for some of you. I know you're really going to enjoy this one um, but when completed I want you to draw a picture of yourself showing good body language in an interview. So here we are on our pacing guide right here with day 11. Okay, so we're going to start here on pages 137 and go to page 149 there. It's pretty short, like I said. And then we're going to um, draw a picture. I do have some um, extra paper I had I put in your, you should have at least like three pages of notebook paper I put in those packets. So you can use one of those today to do our activity. And again, I know some of us with our multiple intelligences drawing is a really is a good strength for us so I wanted to utilize those strengths that some of you guys have myself I do not have that strength so I have an example here um, using stick people that I'll show you at the end to kind of give you an idea of what I'm asking for in this activity today but really what we're going to get into is we're going to continue talking about the interview and we're going to talk about the employer so the person interviewing you their perspective and um, some different things there so before we get into that, just a quick reminder, if you're already here on this lesson and watching this video and have not contacted me to do an over the phone mock interview, that means a fake interview, please do so. I want to definitely check in with each of you personally and then also work with you personally one to one on those interview questions and skills. So please make sure that you complete this assignment from our last lesson, I think it was actually our day eight lesson. So please make sure you complete that. I'm sorry, it was our day nine lesson. So please uh, make sure you review our day nine, complete these questions. I had all those sentence sims there, so go back to day nine and look at uh, that video. Make sure you complete that. Once you do, please reach out to me. I've already, like I said, had a couple of you guys already reach out to schedule those. So thank you uh, for those of you who have done that. Um, so please make sure to do that. Again, take your time. If you're not here on our uh, day 11 lesson, that's fine. Just go back and make sure you know we're completing everything before we move forward. So uh, just a little reminder there. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started here on Chapter 6 of our book, Teen's Guide to Finding a Job. Right here, Chapter 6. So you can see here how this is how... The person interviewing you is looking at you and some of the things that they're looking for. So let's go ahead and read this checklist. Employer interviewing notes. Dressed well. Education. Good communicator. Positive attitude. Body language. Typing skills and experience. So we're really going to focus today on that body language piece. All right, so let's move on here to page 138, our overview. Would I hire me? It, <clears throat> it may sound silly to ask this question, but this is the time to do an honest self-examination or a reflection. Employers will want to know if they hire you, what's in it for me? How are you going to benefit their company? So, And that's a fair question. And you can become more prepared to answer as you go through this chapter. The chapters to follow describe how to conduct a successful interview. Or, I'm sorry, the preceding chapters, so the chapter before our last chapter, describe how to conduct a successful interview. You are introduced to self-assessment tools as well to identify your likes and dislikes. You learned how to research the company to gather helpful and insightful information when you practice completing an, and you practice completing an employment application. So just a quick review of kind of, of what we've done um, already here through our book of our self-assessment tools in chapter one, our networking, researching the companies and different ways we can do that. And then also uh, practicing those employment applications and then those um, in common interview questions as well. So you were exposed to the basic formats of resume writing and taught how to conduct a win-win interview. Now it's time to put all of these together. So let's review the employer's perspective. And perspective means the other person, what they're seeing and um, information they're getting. So right now we're kind of putting ourselves you know, we're so used to being the person asked the questions. Now we're kind of thinking about the person who is asking us these questions, the employer or the prospective employer. 
So let's review the employer's perspective and fine tune the information you have studied. You're now ready to apply this knowledge in the real world. The employer's perspective that follows is compiled of responses to a survey that 100 employers kindly completed and returned. The employer's survey come from a range of businesses and a variety of career fields. So respondents were required to meet this criteria. Experienced in interviewing individuals aged 15 to 25, had the authority to hire and fire individuals, employed in a company or industry in which the workforce was predominantly between the ages of 15 to 25, so young adults, demonstrated a strong desire to work with people that were interested in their success. So we asked, or the book, uh, the author of this book, reached out to these employers that interview young adults, um, are qualified to hire and fire um, their employees, and ask them, and also want to work with young people. So we asked them to we asked them to tell us in detail what they liked and disliked about working with this age group. Then we carefully analyzed the group and grouped this information into the following three categories. So a lot of information they got back from these employers were things that they liked that candidates did and things they really didn't like. So we have a do's and a don'ts. And that's great to know for us um, as we continue with our interviewing. So the do list. What employers particularly like or value in the workplace and therefore what potential employees should attempt to do on their applications and during their interviews. Some good tips. The don'ts list. What employer said potential employees should not or never do on their application or during the interview or even after being hired? Note, the do's and don'ts list, the do's and don'ts are listed by category but in no order of importance. The carrying employer, employers and this author believe that each listed do and don't is of equal importance for you to pay close attention to. So what they're saying here is the book believes that each of these points of you should do this or you shouldn't do this, they're all very important, okay? And we're gonna go through them. I might think some are more important than others, but my opinion. Words of wisdom and encouraging messages is gonna be, is gonna be how this chapter ends. So the participating employees jotted down tips to support your success and candid ways to assist a young person entering the workforce for the first time. They know it's challenging for young people to enter the workforce. And what they're doing is their words of encouragement. And I really like that. You know, I like the fact that the book is giving us feedback on what we should and should not do. And then offers that extra advice of encouragement, especially something we all need right now, right? So application and resume do lists. We're going to start out with the things we should be doing on our applications and resumes. Do. Be properly dressed when picking up an application, an employment application, or delivering a completed application. So even that first step of going in there and getting applications, dress up a little bit for that. Collared shirt, tucked in, you know, look professional. Number two, have your resume and reference sheets available. You know, we have our resume. We now have our references listed. We've reached out to those references, hopefully, and gotten their uh, permission to use them. So now we can compile a list of those references and give that to them. Write neatly or type your employment application. So again, uh, like I said, if you're given a paper application, you can ask for a few copies to make sure it's perfectly neat. Um, and, and how important that is. Um, next page here, number four, fill in every line on the application or at, ne or at least knowledge that you have read it by putting NA non-applicable uh, non in the block, or you can put none if that's um, acceptable or uh, pertains to you as well. Ah, getting that itchy nose thing. All right, number five, list your achievements and awards as they apply to the job or career field. List all your training experiences, so certificates such as a Red Cross certification or other community certification. So just list anything that is helpful to you and shows that you're experienced to enter the workforce. So Project Search is going to be one of those internship experiences that aren't that's not very well known to a lot of the employers, but that you can highlight and talk about. Write a detailed description of your past work experiences using examples. So listing those exact jobs, 
jobs that you did or tasks that you did in that experience. So now we're gonna get into the interview do list, some things that employers, real employers, said that they really like that candidates do in the interview. So here we go, number one, very important, be punctual. Punctual means on time. You've heard me say this before. I, I always say on time is late and early is on time. So always, it's good practice to always arrive 15 minutes before your scheduled appointment. That's interviews, that, that's doctor's appointments, that's any appointments that you have with others. It's always good to arrive 15 minutes early um, before your scheduled appointment. This shows your eagerness and interest and I think also how professional you are and organized with time management. So note, if an emergency comes up, because that happens, be considerate and responsible enough to call and explain the situation and reschedule as soon as possible. So we all know that we have things that we can't control, traffic, flat tires, um, and different things like that, that could affect, even though you plan to get there early, that could affect you. What you do is the same thing you do with me uh, when you're late to work. You would call, let them know, I'm so sorry, can we please reschedule? And just keep that open line of communication. People understand that, you know, things happen. It happens to all of us. Number two in the interview do list, act mature. Um, so be mature, act adult, and, um, you know, really show your work self in that interview. Be particularly neat and appropriately dressed for your interview. So in an interview, you might even want to dress a bit more um, formal than even going to pick up your job application. So I would say even a tie would be appropriate for this, a collar shirt with a tie. Or uh, for the ladies, even if you wanted to wear a dress or a skirt, you know, make sure it's not too short, but also just dress up something you would wear if you, if you do go to church, something you would dress up for that um, event or maybe like a semi-casual event uh, that schools hold. So just think about what, what would be some nice attire to wear for that. Maybe if you go to a wedding, maybe um, that type of attire would also be appropriate. Uh, number four, show good manners. You know, saying thank you, you're well, I mean, just those common good manners is very important to show. Stand up when you are approached by your uh, potential employer and give a firm handshake. Um, so we're going to talk about handshakes. Uh, right now with our current climate, with um, a virus going around, people are not wanting to or are not supposed to touch one another at this time. So... Although the book is going to talk about firm handshakes and although we have talked about before how important that firm, you know, web to web handshake is, right now that might not be something we want to do. So please keep that in mind. We are going to, it does bring this up uh, in the chapter and I do give it an example of it in our activity. So I just want you guys to know right now that handshakes might be something after this whole virus ends. Um, that might be something people aren't feeling comfortable to do anymore. So once, you know, everything's back to normal and you're in an interview, really take the lead on what that other employer wants to do. They might not want to shake hands anymore. So that's fine. That's why that eye contact and smile are so important as well. Okay, so I just wanted to have a little disclaimer there about handshakes right now due to our uh, current climate but always be respectful. And you really wanna take their lead on that. That's why you're observing and listening to the other person. Um, coming in, if they ask you to sit, okay, thank you, say thank you and sit down, you know, different things like that, being respectful. Uh, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, also would be appropriate. So be polite, uh, speak clearly, and have direct eye contact with everyone you speak to. So we say eye contact, eye contact, and you guys hear that so much. But it's really just you're, look, you're taking the cue from the other person. You know, you're not staring at them like this. You know, I've had young adults do that. And that's a little too intense. You don't want to have your eyebrows up all the time, like looking at them so intently. Excuse me. But what you do want to do is make sure that you can look away because sometimes we look away when we're thinking, but then always come back to that person. What we don't want to see is someone like this the whole time answering questions and looking down like this. It really makes me feel like I'm not having a conversation with you. So just remember to chin up and 
look. You know, it doesn't have to be an intense stare, but it does need to be something that you're doing looking at that person, okay, for a good amount of that conversation. Be cheerful and show high energy. Be extremely outgoing to people. So you might have to, some of us are a little shy and that's okay, but you might have to really pump it up during the interview. Hi, how are you? Yes, my name is Paula. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for having me today. You know, I'm really being very nice, very positive, very outgoing, and I'm, I'm kind of forcing myself to do that a little bit. And that's what we're going to have to do. Having a positive attitude, that's a huge one for me. And be prepared to sell yourself as a future employee. So remember, we're staying positive, we're smiling, we're excited, we're nodding, and we're also making positive statements. You know, no, I can't or I won't in an interview. Instead, well, you know, I've never tried that before, but I'm willing to learn. So this shows a positive aspect of you, of being a willing person to learn new things. Show confidence. I know we don't always feel confident, but remember, we got to fake it till we make it. So shoulders back, you know, chin up, we're showing that confidence. Be relaxed at the same time, which is hard to do, I know, but just try to relax. Um, remember to breathe in and out and tell people what you are looking for. Uh, use your people skills well. Be flexible and open. It's not going to be you know, you're going to be nervous before the interview and it's going to be very different than what you think it's going to be. So just go with the flow. It's okay. You can't see into the future. So just be flexible with whatever little uh, twist you have there. Research the company and know that they do. Remember, that's from chapter two. Be current on industry trends and changes. So understanding the climate, uh, the work climate. Uh, bring your youthful and energy and exuberance to the company. So you guys are young adults, you're excited, and really bring that youthful energy. Uh, that's what adults love to see from, um, from you guys. Show plans to stay at the company for, the long for a long time. So you're not saying, well, you know, I'd like to do this for a couple months and then move on. You know, no, you want to show that you would be willing to stay at that company for a while, you know, if you think that's a good fit for you. Uh, state why you are the best person qualified for the job when asked. Um, or given a suitable opening. Take the opportunity uh, to plainly state you want the job and will serve the company well. So again, even though you're in an interview, you still have to state that you want that job. And um, employers just like to hear that. Well, you know, I'm really interested in being cashier. I think it would be a great opportunity for me to not only um, gain work experience, but also to work with customers, which I really enjoy doing. And so you're stating that you want that job and you're telling why. Okay, now let's get into some do nots. So these things, um, employer said, actually keep you from getting the job. So this may prevent you from being hired. So these are big don'ts that employers thought in their head like, oh yeah, this really stuck out to me that this, this person I interviewed did this and it's really, really didn't serve them well and I didn't hire them. Okay, so don't. Things we don't do. Call a company and casually ask if it is hiring. Um, so if you're serious about it, you don't want to really cold call, you want to really check in, see who's the person you want to go in there and make that personal appearance and see what that um, application process is like. Uh, yell at people in or outside of their business place. So that, I think, goes without saying. We're not going to yell at people. That's not an appropriate way to communicate. It's an aggressive way, not assertive. Uh, use slang or vulgar language. It is not acceptable in any business environment. Have inaccurate information on your form. We talked about that. In your employment applications, you sign that everything's true. So don't lie on the resume or that application. Uh, you had a torn or stained application. So again, if you accidentally spill something that happens or it gets ripped, ask for another application. They don't want anything stained or torn to put, be put in their files. So just ask for another one and complete it. Use a pencil to f use use a pencil to fill in an application. I don't agree with that. I think that's pen. I don't know why it says that. 
They throw me little curveballs in this application. A pen should be used to do an application. Uh, oh, sorry, do not. Sorry, I'm on the do nots. Ugh. So yeah, do not use a pencil. Uh, you should always use a pen. Again, why we ask for multiple copies. Uh, turn in a sloppily written application. So really taking note of those applications, making sure you know it's written neatly where someone else can read your handwriting. And if we need to take extra time to do that, that's what you do. Uh, use whiteout or make scratch outs. So we don't really want to, I think I did it on one of my applications. I showed you, you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to scribble over, oh, I wrote, I wrote the zip code instead of the state. And I scribbled that out. Just do another application. Uh, make repetitive statements on your application or resume. So just changing it up. We did this a lot in our resumes where instead of completed, we would use a different word that was similar. We used the thesaurus a lot. Remember, <laughs> we used that thesaurus.com a lot on y'all's resumes. And that's just, they don't want to see the same things over and over again. It's just like reading. It can get boring hearing the same thing. So we want to change that up a good bit. And then hand in an incomplete application. It actually means that you're not qualified to continue with the application process if that if that first step is incomplete. And then do not turn in an unsigned form. So doing that whole application and then not signing your signature at the end doesn't make it valid. So again, that's an incomplete application. All right, here we go. We're gonna move into the interview don't list. So this that was the applications. This is the interviews, what not to do in interviews. So don't be late, be tardy. If you're not on time for the interview, employers will rightly assume you most likely won't show up for work on time, which we know is a huge, huge deal. So if you can't show up to that interview on time, they're like, well, they can't even be here when I need them to work. So mm, that probably prevented them from being hired. Number two, do not bring your friends to the interview. Um, never say you must leave because someone is waiting on you either. Make sure when you have transportation that that person's willing to wait on you and take that time. This doesn't need to be a rushed event. And don't bring your friends. Can't believe someone did, did that. Some of these things I'm like, ooh. All right, have poor hygiene. So be unshaven or have bad breath, body odor or unkempt messy hair or poor grooming habits, dirty nails, bitten nails, chewing on your hair. Um, those are all things I have seen young adults do, and I just really, you guys, that's so important that as an adult, we get to this stage of that proper hygiene that we utilize, and any of that stuff that's seen during an interview is going to be like, oh, I don't, you know, this person, we want a professional appearance and how important that is. So that's a great point there. Uh, number four, chew gum or have candy in your mouth. So I know a lot of us love chewing gum, but, you know, in the interview, that's not a place to do that. Dress trendy or street like shorts, tank tops, flip flops shows a lack of professionalism and in consideration for a potential employer. So just again, make sure you're dressed professionally. Flip flops and tank tops and shorts are not appropriate attire for interviews or not appropriate clothes to wear for interviews. So I know Charleston can be kind of a casual town, but still you need to dress it up a little bit for this interview. Um, number six, show excessive nervousness. Um, yet on the flip side, try not to be reserved either. So this is this is a tough one because you're all going to be nervous for the interview. I'm nervous for interviews, but you just really have to calm, be confident. I can do this. Use that positive self-talk. And I think one that decreases any nervousness you're having and then increases that confidence as well that positive self-talk. You can do it. I can do this. I've practiced. I'm going to do great. Have poor body language. Uh, examples of, poor, of bad body language, slouching, you know, uh, sitting on the edge of the chair, being stiff or unapproachable, uh, like you have a chip on your shoulder. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more in our activity. Uh, also, body language, do not cross your arms. Um, this body language is known to show a negative attitude. So if Ms. Carr was just, if I was just doing all my lessons and I was just like, Ugh. hey guys, welcome to day 10. You know, that doesn't look like I'm being positive or happy to be there or excited. So try not to cross your arms. And number nine, give a simple yes or no answers during the interview because causing the employer to do all the talking. 
So this is a big one. So when the employer asks you questions, you need to be ready for some for the responses that we worked on uh, previously. So if the employer says, oh, okay, so you're interested in working here, and you go, yes. Okay. Can you tell me why you're interested in working here? Because I want to. Those are short answers, and that's going to make that interview very, very short because you're not giving them a lot to go on. So that's why we're really working on getting really good responses that gives the information more information. You know, you don't want to talk the whole time like Ms. Carr tends to do. However, you do want to do more than say just yes or no to a response. Always. Um, mumble your answers. Well, I don't know. I'm not a great mumble. But you don't want to mumble. You want to speak very clearly. If that takes you a little bit more time to look up and to take time to produce words out of your mouth, then do that. You, you're going to need to do that because if we're down here like this and I'm saying like this, you're not really understanding what I'm saying and you can't really go on with the interview because they can't hear you. Okay? You guys didn't probably had to turn up and like, what is she saying? Probably because captions didn't even pick that one up. So really making sure you're speaking clearly, not mumbling. That's why I was like, you know, sometimes we give prompts um, during class. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time? Can you speak up? That's how you need to be talking. Uh, use slang phrases as you know or like. You guys do this to me sometimes. I'm like, no, I don't know. Can you explain? <laughs> the employer is going to do the same thing. Don't assume they know something. Well, you know, I was in project search, you know. They don't know. You're going to have to explain that a little bit. That's a year-long internship through Charleston County. Uh, at the embassy. You know, you're going to have to explain some things here. Don't assume they know. And just saying things like, oh, you know. You know, we gotta we gotta get out of that habit. Uh, give long answers to questions. Don't give long answers to questions or be a no at all. So again, there's that fine line of just responding, yep. And then there's that fine line of going on and on for an hour. You know, you wanna just give short, concise answers that uh, really went along with our sentence stems on our common interview question activity. Uh, you don't want to be irresponsible, careless, or unfocused, so make sure you're focusing on the conversation. You don't want to repeat yourself or use expre expressions such as, um, uh, which could mean you're easily distracted, unsure of yourself, or impolite. I have this problem in these videos, so I can't be too judgy on this, but, you know, just try to, you know, <laughs> just try to... Slow down, speak clearly, and that'll keep you from doing the mm. uh, Don't leave your answers unfinished. You know, uh, answer the question. Uh, jump to the conclusions before question or statement is completely voiced. I have problems with this. So wait for the employer to ask the complete question before you just jump right in. Because that could, see, that could be seen as impolite of you cutting them off. So make sure you listen to that full question first. Elaborate on your negative qualities. So, oh man, I just, I just can't be on time to anything. Okay, that's not good. You don't want to highlight that in your interview. Show lack of experience. They expect you to be ambitious, motivated. So you might share um, volunteer experiences or information about providing assistance to your neighbors or community. Uh, do not complain about previous employers. So you might have had a bad experience um, at a job, but this is not the time to talk about that because that employer is going to think, oh, well, if they're talking you know, so much smack about their last employer, they're going to talk bad about me someday to someone else. So don't do that. That's not very professional. Even though you may have really had a bad experience, this is not the time to uh, talk badly about somebody else, another employer. You don't want to give a negative expression or speak poorly of your personal outlook on life, so just stay positive. Hesitate to speak up and ask questions. It shows an indifference in the job, which means the job is not your priority. So it's so important to ask questions, just as the employer is asking you questions. So make sure to, especially at the end, if they ask you, are there any questions for me? You should have some questions prepared. Number 24, look at the floor, ceiling, or elsewhere. Keep your eyes on the person interviewing you. 
Be careful not to give the impression that you are indifferent or uncaring. So when you're doing an interview, just looking up at the ceiling, looking over here, what's going on over here? Okay, that person's asking me questions, but I'm like not even looking. I'm looking over here. I look unfocused. I look like I don't care. And that's not what we want to show. Uh, you do not want to stare into space. That implies you're not interested or mature enough for the job. Basically the same thing as 24. 26, state that you aren't impressed by the employer's company. So you don't want to say anything negative about the company. You know, like, oh, well, you know, really thought you guys would have a nicer building here. You know, you don't want to state anything negative about them. And you do not want to request time off before you've been working. So, yeah, so if you hired me, I'm going to go ahead and need to take two weeks off. Uh, you know, that's, you might need to, but during the interview, you know, let that work itself out and then you'll get to those details, just like the salary. Okay. So, another after you're hired uh, don't list. So, there's a lot of things we have to think about even after we're hired and do get the job. Do not have excessive absences. Be absent all the time. You know, this might be something that is not your fault. This really, it might be a medical condition, but it's something that really needs to be taken care of because you can be the best employee, but if you're not there, that's really going to hurt that job experience. Um, employers just can't have somebody that they can't have there working. So really make sure before you accept a job that you're in a place where you're not gonna have those excessive absences, that you have a way to wake yourself up in the morning and get to that job, and that you're reliable. It's a big one. The company rightfully expects you to be there on time as scheduled. Uh, missing your work commitments and deadlines set by the company, just not getting your work done a lot, that's a problem. You know, maybe if you're like, you know, I, I found I need more time to complete this task and work with them on that and have that open communication is a great way to go about that instead of just not doing it. Um, stand around. You know, when you get done with something, just kind of stand around. Oh, well, I'm, I finished. I'm done. Okay. Uh, use this time to be creative and find some other work to keep yourself busy. Find what else you can do. That's all about being that self-starter. Complain or gossip or associate with those who like to spread rumors. There's going to be those people everywhere. They're going to want to talk badly about other people. I get it. We get frustrated. Uh, coworkers are kind of like our family. We get frustrated with them a lot, right? We get upset with them a lot. But, you know, you really can't start that drama in the workplace. I know this was a big thing in high schools. You really need to distance yourself away from that. Because you never know who to get around to. So you don't want to really be going around saying negative things about others or even be around others that do that. Uh, you do not want to be... Be playful and not pay close attention to instruction. Uh, you do not want to use a use the work phone or your cell phone excessively, or use your cell phone while assisting customers. So being on your cell phone when a customer is trying to help you, hmm. Yeah, well, you know, if you just look on aisle seventeen, you know, I'm not paying attention to that person. So you got to put that cell phone away, guys. Keep it in your pocket. I'm upside down. Uh, have a long or frequent visits with your friends, like having your friends come and see you at work and hang out. It's not the time to really do that. Uh, be late to returning uh, from breaks or lunch. You guys are really good about this um, in the training room and on site at the hotel, returning from your break promptly at 12. You know, you don't want to have your lunch and then it end at 12 when you're supposed to be back to work and then be like, oh, I need to go use the restroom. You know, that should have been done during that 30-minute break or whatever uh, time you have for that break. You don't want to complain about others and your supervisor to co-workers. So, again, we're not gossiping about other people. If you if you do have a problem with somebody, it would be wise to talk to them privately in a professional manner. But you really don't want to go to other people about that. And that includes, I know we talked about it on social media, too. You don't want to go on social media like, I hate my boss. They're the worst. You don't know who that can get back around to. So think about that as well. Uh, do not take personal matters to high-level manager before you go to your supervisor. So just understanding who your supervisor is. That's who you go to first uh, with any issues that you have. 
And then if, you know, it needs to go higher than that, then you go higher than that. So just understand who you really go to. You don't want to go to like a big boss with kind of a smaller level, you know, level three problem. You know, there for that, those level five problems. So just go to that supervisor first. And you don't want to show a negative attitude about taking on extra duties. You know, if you're asked to do something and you complete that task and you're like, oh, well, can you also go ahead and finish this? What? You don't want to like, ugh. You know, show a negative attitude about that. Take on those. If you're doing well, you might, you're going to get some extra work. Uh, even as a teacher, we get that a lot. So if you're doing well, then you're going to get some extra work added to you. Take that as a compliment that they're like, wow, this is a hard worker. We're going to give them more responsibility. Take that with a positive attitude because that's a good thing. All right, now we're going to get into some words of wisdom and encouraging messages. So employers pass on the following words of wisdom and encouraging messages, which I think we all need for teens looking for a job. We used each employer's exact wording. So these are exact words that came from these employers. So you'll understand the true importance of their expectations. So a lot of statements here. Here we go. Dress for success when picking up and dropping off employment applications. Anything excessive is unattractive. So you don't want to like wear way too much make wear too much makeup or wear way too much accessories when going into these interviews. If not hired by one employer, do not take it personally. Keep going for what you want and what will make you happy. Be serious about whatever you are out to achieve. Stay focused, friendly, and reliable. When searching for a job, always be prepared with transportation to make it to the interview. Always remember to look and feel your best. This is an attitude and it's within your control. Be yourself and let your personality shine through. Take classes to prepare for the job search process. Relax, think positive, be confident. Have a positive attitude and be confident. Excuse me, nose is itching really bad today for some reason. All right, do your best, do the best you can do at each job. Any previous job performances will affect your future job opportunities. Don't be discouraged. Work hard, you'll move up in life. During the interview, sell yourself to the company. Eye contact is key. Be persistent if you, so don't give up, if you want to go after the job and always follow up with those thank you notes, follow up calls. Appearance and attitude are very important. Didn't even mention job skills or experience, did it? Or education, just appearance and attitude go so far. Be polite, smile a lot, and make yourself available to work. The more wide open your availability, the more attractive you become. Be mature, don't be shy, and do look professional. Be persistent when looking for work, so don't give up. Be friendly and outgoing, make good eye contact. You'll often get put off or discouraged in your job search, but don't take it personally. Most companies interview a lot of applicants just for one position. So remember all those famous people that we read about a couple months ago, and we were like, they didn't give up. You know, they didn't, you know, after they heard no, no, again and again, they still kept going and were successful. So you got to keep per being persistent. Sell yourself to the interviewer. Be positive. Be professional. Relax. Do the best job. Give 100%, not 90%. Be aggressive and always remember to smile. Well, that person had a lot of feedback there. And that's hard. So remember how we talked about Sometimes we'd come in into the uh, training room in the mornings at the hotel and we're like, ugh, you know, Ms. Carr's like, ask me what percent I'm at today because I could tell you're not at 100%. That's okay. No one is 100% every day. So what's important though is the day of your interview, if you wake up and you see that, oh, really like kind of at a 75% today, just really force yourself to get to that 100%. You know, that's just a, a day where you might have to force it a little bit. 
Educate yourself of the, on the position you're applying for. Always make eye contact, speak clearly, and don't give one word answers. Back up your answers. So again, not just answering yep, nope, and those questions. If you're going to work for others, be sure to give them your all and be prepared to learn. Remember that someday you will be in their position helping another young person, you know? So if you put uh, in 110% all the time, you can be confident you've tried your best. So just always, all I've ever asked, all I ever ask you guys for this whole year, and I've said this before, is just try your best. That's it. That's all we can ask for. And if you're trying your best, then that's all you can do. And you're going to reach those goals that you want when you're doing that, when you're doing everything you can, when you're doing that research, dressing professionally, getting there on time, being confident, or faking being confident. You're doing your best. That's all you can do. Okay? All right. Uh, getting here to page 146, job search skills. So employers were also requested to comment on three areas that are important or critical to the success of a job seeker. So three skills, three areas they're looking for. Communication skills, transferable skills, and body language. The following tips will contribute to having a positive experience while conducting a successful job search and being employed. So communication skills, let's go over a few of those. We've talked about that a lot. We've practiced that a lot in the training room this year. But just a couple of reminders here on communication skills we need to work on. Be an effective listener. When we talk about communication, a lot of times listening doesn't come up as an important part of that, but it is so important. So listen and pay attention. Number two, speak clearly and use examples or tell about the actual event when explaining your work experience. Give direct answers and explain your actions. Don't take your parents with you to look for a job and have them do all the talking for you. So you want to take you want to take ownership in this process as much as possible. I know you're going to rely on parents for transportation and support in some areas, but again, as much as as much as you can of this interview, do yourself. Be articulate. That means speak clearly and uh, assertively. Uh, clearly communicate your ideas. Be flexible. Be attention or pay attention to the person you're talking with. Pronounce words properly. Um, you do not talk to adults with the same way you talk to your friends, so uh, that means no slang. So that's a good um, that's a good little reminder here. You know, you talk to your friends in one way. What's up, man? How's it going? Well, it's not really how you're going to greet a future employer, right? So just use those proper greetings and those proper words to communicate with those adults. Speak to everyone with respect and listen to what people have to say. Learn how to resolve conflicts and relate to others. Be prepared to ask questions. Be honest and polite. Be well-spoken and talkative. Again, do not use slang. Number 14, be conscious of good posture, sitting up. Uh, turn the power off on all electronic devices. So turn your cell phone off. This is not a time to get a, have your phone ringing during this interview. That's not going to be good. If you wish to use a tablet, laptop, or smartphone to take notes, request permission to do that. Because if I just all of a sudden started off in my interview with somebody, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This looks like I could be like texting somebody while they're talking to me. But if I say, you know what, it really helps me to use my phone to take notes. Would you mind if I did that? Then that person, you know, already knows, oh, well, that's what they're doing with their phone in their hand. All right, transferable skills. So playing on uh, sports, playing sports, sports uh, teaches teamwork. So that's always good. Babysitting jobs, paper routes give a sense of responsibility. Prior work experience is teach universal skills. So that's what you guys have really gotten out of Project Search here. Something no one can take away from you. You've gotten those transferable skills of learning how to be to work on time, dressing in a uniform, um, communicating with coworkers, following task lists that are given to you, asking questions. These are all things that are transferable skills that can be used in any position you get moving forward. So don't forget those and how important those are. Be able to listen, get, give advice, and share with others. All great people skills. Uh, tracking and record keeping, show you've been responsible for your daily course 
schedules and staying on top of assignments. So using a personal calendar or however uh, keeps you organized in those organizational skills are great. Meeting deadlines and turning in class assignments. So knowing when to turn in assignments and do things um, on time and requesting extra time if needed. Public relations, holding an elected position in school or joining a club uh, prepares you to know how to speak with people and handle workplace uh, relations. So those club experiences are valuable. Computer lab experience provides uh, technical skills, computer skills. Uh, our keyboarding skills, we've, we've worked on typing a good bit this year, so that's uh, how to use a keyboard is very um, is a good transferable skill as well. Salesmanship, speaking and presenting ideas to your school student body, showing you're better prepared for a sales workforce if you're interested in that sales or retail industry. Outgoing, enthusiastic, and friendly personality are also strong selling points. Everything else can be taught, but these traits cannot be. So I know some of us aren't the most outgoing. That's totally okay. Just try to show that personality. Try to show that um, as much as you can. Uh, the ability to work with others is required. You guys, this is a strength for you. Any teamwork activities we've done, you guys are so great at. So continue that teamwork ethic when going into the workforce because it's going to be very important even though some positions do require you to work independently for a good bit of time you will at some point have to work with other people so we really need to be willing to do that and open to do doing that and that's a transferable skill you guys have worked on as well uh leadership showing initiative uh, such as taking lead in extracurricular activities will serve you well in the work world so days when this car is in a meeting and not there if you're in the training room with a substitute and you guys really took lead on well this is what we're supposed to be doing and you know stuff like that taking leadership when your leader's not around is also a great trait and running things uh, like you know they should be all right, so page 148. This is going to relate to our activity that we're going to do. Body language. So I was thinking, I'm uh, sorry, I'm a big Disney fan. I always think of Ariel and uh, the Little Mermaid with that one. So body language, very important. Um, these are 11 tips for body language. Uh, so mark, not mark this 148, but stay on this page 148 because this is going to relate to the activity that we're going to do afterwards. So sit up straight. Don't squirm around in your seat. Make good eye contact and try not to make nervous fidgeting movements. Um, you know, remember squeezing hands is always a great strategy if you're feeling fidgety because this isn't, this looks professional. If your hands are, you know, folded like this in your lap, that looks professional, but you're also kind of squeezing a little bit to stop any of that fidgeting, nail picking, whatever. Um, reach out confidently, give a firm handshake. Remember right now in the climate handshakes we're not doing, but, um, when things hopefully get back to normal <laughs> and, um, just again, go on. If that person puts their hand out, then you can handshake. But right now we're not, but again, in the future, if someone does and it's okay, you can shake their hand. Appear relaxed and at ease while talking with people you don't know. Smile and keep a pleasant look on your face. Nod and show signs of agreement when appropriate. Also show signs of needing more clarity. So we've talked about nodding. When someone's talking to you, sometimes I'll uh, ask you guys a question or give you directions and, you know, I just get kind of like a stare, a blank stare. Um, so, but you heard what I was saying. So instead of, you know, saying, oh, yes, I understand. You know, you don't always have to verbally say you understand. You can just, okay. Like one, two, three, boom, done. You just nodded and showed that you understood what I was saying. Now, you don't wanna just do this the whole time during the interview. That's gonna be very odd. So again, a nod would be like one, two, three. You understand and you're listening, okay? Now, if you don't understand, don't nod your head because you don't understand. So if you don't understand, be like, um, and, and wait for a good time and then say, could you repeat that or could you explain that more? Um, so you could show that face by kind of putting your eyebrows down, uh, head tilted and be like, and then ask them uh, that question. So don't nod your head if you don't understand, but if you do, 
One, two, three is a great way to body language for you to communicate that without saying anything. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, where are we? Smile. Also show you. Okay. Number six, avoid the excessive use of your hands when talking. So when you're talking, you don't really want to be all around here like you're a mime, you know? You, again, hands right here is good. But also when you're talking, every now and then you can use your hands to express what you're talking about, but don't do it the whole time. I'm a big hand person, so I have to tone it down sometimes too. All right, sit so you look directly at the interviewer. They'll probably tell you where to sit, but just make sure you're looking you know, at them, not like face away like this in your interview, right? You want to be like facing them. Okay. Uh, avoid slouching and biting nails like that. Okay, that's not really the body language you're going to show. Again, shoulders back, chin up, eye contact. Uh, ladies, play, play, pay, pay close attention when crossing your legs. No one wants to see um, whatever, your underwear. Likewise for men and women, don't show your midsection and behind uh, by wearing tops that are too short or that rise up in the back. So, you know, just make sure everything fits. You're not showing any any skin between, you know, your stomach and in that area, your backside. You know, sometimes our pants get a little low in the back, so make sure that's all pulled up. And even better, have that shirt tucked in. So that's your safety net. And maintain good posture. Shoulders back. Here we go, page 149, and then we'll get into our activity. Uh, you guys are doing great. So here we go. Advice to keep in mind. Now that you have carefully reviewed the employer's expectations and compared the information in the first chapters, it's time to identify and determine your course of action. You can start to effectively plan your career path. Your job search can be fun and adventurous. Remember to be positive and friendly and always smile. Try not to be too nervous about interviewing. After all, it's just part of the bigger process. With all this information, it's likely your confidence has greatly increased, hopefully. At this point, the negative stories you've heard about the job search process no longer have merit. From this time forward, you'll no longer talk to yourself, talk yourself out of what you have the potential and the will to do. Yes, you're now ready to go out and conquer that job search. All right. So, a little more words of encouragement there. You guys are more capable than you think you are, I promise. So just show that confidence and show that positive body language in those interviews. So today's assignment is to draw a picture of yourself showing good body language. I know some of you, again, are going to really enjoy this because you're very artistic. Some of us, like myself, not so much. So that's okay. We're going to power through it anyways in a positive manner. So look at page 148 here with these different 11 um, tips for body language. That's what we're going to focus on. Uh, so you can grab out a sheet of paper, a blank sheet of paper. I also put that notebook paper in your packet, so you can use one of those pieces. And I'll show you my <laughs> example. Again, if you're not a good drawer, that is okay. I used stick people. So I'm going to show you kind of what I put together here and what I'm looking for in this activity. So good body language during the interview. I did a couple of examples. So you can like, you don't have to just draw one. You can draw a couple. So let me show you what I did here. So here I show, showed a person sitting in their seat, showing good posture. You can label it like that. They're smiling, eye contact. I know you guys are totally laughing about my stick people, but this is pretty much how, how good I do with, with all that. All right, and then I showed um, you're listening. My ears are listening. And then this is the um, nodding of the head. That's always good to show that you're listening. So I drew it like that there. And then here we go. I did this firm handshake, but again, um, just make sure that's something that that person's wanting to do um, and putting their hand out first. But anyway, what's really important is that smile and again, that eye contact. So just look over those points and um, as many of those as you can put on paper, as many examples that you can draw out, the better. I also did a don't, so if you feel like doing that, feel free. So don't look down, frown, or arms crossed. Even though you have a uh, mystic person, you can still tell that this person is not as excited as this person is about this interview. 
And again, that's really going to attract all these good body language tips are really going to attract those employers. So just wanted to give you my <laughs> stick person example, just to give you an idea, get creative with it as much as possible, but just really think about uh, that good body language and how you can show that and what that looks like to you. Okay. And use uh, that page 148 to help you with uh, different ideas there. Okay. So tomorrow I'll go ahead and post uh, day 11. Again, if you guys need anything, let me know during my interview or interview hours, my uh, office hours. And I look forward uh, to those over the phone interviews with you guys. Take care.